You gonna come down and eat, Tux? Good morning. Oh, big stretch. Good boy. Oh, the stripes right here by my feet, so maybe not so good. But you're good. Oh, another big stretch. Here comes Ruby. It's Tuesday. It's chiropractor, guardian angel, apex, whole foods, run around day today. Our weather today is a lot like yesterday. We should get up into the 50s. All the kitties are here. Everybody's doing good this morning. Well, it's officially February now. I wonder if Don read his meters this morning. Guess I better remind him. I don't think he did. Good morning, Panther and Gray. So I did get the appointment made for the new stray gray cat who I put uh, the name Smokey on the paperwork. And uh, next Tuesday is the day to take him. So I'll be trying to catch him Monday evening. Maybe Sunday evening. Give me two days. We'll see. Are we ready to go, Ruby? Good. Good morning, Ruby. Well, Don saved my bacon last night. At some point, I got a message on A from the garage. Um, an announcement to... Uh, unlock Ruby so that he could plug her in. So he saved my bacon or I would have gotten up this morning and my car not been charged. Although I know that 44 minutes ago she stopped charging and that she's about 15-20 miles short depending on how much heat we use to preheat the car in the morning of her usual mileage when I leave the house which isn't going to cause me a problem today but I did definitely notice when I got in trees are pretty. Yesterday was gorgeous on the way in. I wish so much I had time to stop and take a picture. Well, we're on time for 7.20 a.m. Um, there was a real fast stop and some cars left of me almost got in trouble. And then they still went down the road following too fast. Oh well. I just let them go after those shenanigans I didn't want to be too close to them I'm not all the way awake yet I don't need to deal with that at you know 645 in the morning the color seems to have faded it's not going to be as pretty as it was yesterday well I just saw a notification from the Tesla app that Jules charged up to 85% last night. Now I understand why Ruby didn't finish charging because she was sharing charging with Jules and we didn't bump up her charge rate, which we could have. And Don doesn't usually charge Jules to 85%, so that was probably left over from the storm charge. Um, so a couple of different factors there. Because, yeah, when Don caught that Ruby wasn't plugged in, I think it was by 9 p.m., just maybe 30 minutes later she started than normal it wasn't like he saw it at midnight or something so but that explains the rest of the picture mark because I was like god nine to six that was more than enough time for Ruby to finish but if she was reduced charge rate because Jules was also charging then that that makes a lot more sense yeah Don sent me a message he said um you know, he always charges root or uh, jewels up on the uh, last slash first day of the month. It's just a thing that evens out the um, charge numbers a little bit. And uh, he thought Jules was back down to 50%. I really wish, and this is not the first time this has happened or the first time I've wished it, that Tesla would have a daily charging and it would have a one-time use um, setting. So, you know, you go on a trip and you set it to 100%, the next time it charges, it goes back to your daily use setting. Um, or you can that night press, I want the, you know, uh, whatever the second charge rate is set. Or, you know, we've got a storm coming in, I've got my second charge rate level set to 85%. I press it one time, it charges up to 85%. And then the next night it goes back. But you know, Tesla thinks everybody should charge to 90% every day or 80% every day. So, but still, there's a lot of people that charge to 100. And then, okay, I got off the quad. This 
people don't move over very much. I know exactly where Ruby's wheel is and I am not curbing my wheel. Anyway, it's not wide enough there and I will not miss that one. I don't have to go on St. Augs anymore. It needs to be, I don't know, four feet wider to make both lanes comfortable and I guarantee I know how close I am to the curb more than 98% uh, of the other people coming down there because I have the mirrors tilted down when I'm inside the quad and I can tell. Don says he's fixed Jules charge rate in the app back to 50%. So cool. We can also do that with Teslify. Um, yeah, I mean, you don't want to set it to 100% for a trip and then come back off the trip, come home, say it's a one day trip, and then that night forget and it charged to 100% again. Um, that's not what you want. So, like I said, a nightly and a temporary, where the temporary is only, you press temporary charge tonight. It's only in effect for one night. I think that would be a helpful feature, but we'll just put it in the long line of features owners want. <laughs> I'm headed home pretty quick. I don't have yesterday's video edit done and I need to finish it and I want to try to squeeze our walk in and then I got to leave on a schedule today. I got to leave by 1025 to go to the chiropractor. So it's going to be a hectic morning and I don't have time to enjoy myself over here and play poker or anything. I gotta be on the move. I just gotta, I'm gonna stretch my legs and leave. Don said we'd probably have more luck getting the Teslify developer to add that function for us. So I'll probably go in and there's a Model X and um, open that uh, design change request with him. He's really good about adding stuff to that app. And I agree, cause we can already go in there and set, he knows how to communicate to the car the desired charge rate and let you change it in the app all he's got to do is um, add a few fields that I really don't think that's huge I want to code it well on the positive side you can see the house back in there better yeah. you really couldn't see it before except looking straight down the driveway on the not so positive side you know they can see their neighbors more now well now that your wrist is in the open and your watch is cold i think it may be more accurate oh, we'll okay. see we'll test my theory because i basically have to keep my apple watch that wrist is also uncovered uh you know you guys that wear apple watches can call me silly but i find that i have problems if i don't leave it uncovered it's mostly for me with a reading correctly of my heart rate versus the number of steps um, but I've definitely noticed heart rate issues it just won't register the heart rate when it's all covered up well although it's going to be 52 again today we have certainly started off with a nice hard frost this morning I'm enjoying being out here but it's brisk it's brisk for sure my foot's doing pretty good. Yeah, I've been great. walking about my normal pace. Well, we'll see what my watch says. But uh, other than not running, which will make our pace seem lower anyway. But it's not giving me too much trouble. And uh, I'm hoping another PEMF treatment today on my foot and my left side of my back. It's oh. in the same spot as when the right side gives me trouble. Uh -oh. But it is uh, staying in my back and not traveling down my leg. So that's good. It's just, I mean, I feel it when I roll over in bed, it hurts so bad. So being walk, it doesn't hurt too much. But anyway, Don and I are trying to solve the problems of the world this morning. Boy, we have been talking, you can turn around now. We have been talking a mile a minute and I'll just give you some subjects. We were talking about climate alarmism versus climate problems versus climate deniers. We had this huge long discussion there. And then we were having a little bit of a discussion about Tesla stock, which is on our mind and Elon's continued um, involvement and vision for Tesla. We watched uh, Stephen Mark Ryan yep. solving the money problem guy. I'm never going to get his name right for some reason. And he had on, uh, who do you have on last night? Clips Gordon of Johnson. Gordon Johnson. I was ready to have a uh, heated discussion with him. <laughs> not pleased with the words coming out of that gentleman's mouth let's just leave it there but Stephen was um seemingly somewhat calm about it anyway um that that got me a little fired up last night it's best not to fire me up especially when I'm cooking <laughs> but anyway we've been having uh and wouldn't you all like to know <laughs> well you know some things have got to stay a little bit under cover at the Miller house but uh 
we're always uh, reevaluating our position on how we feel about certain things. And I was talking with Johnny yesterday, and his generation is very concerned about CO2 and the future of the Earth, and as they should be concerned about a healthy Earth going forward. But um, maybe a little less media-centered, uh, worried about it. I think. Leave it there. Thank you. Hey, Donnie. I'm going to run home today. All right. Okay. He's trying to motivate himself, poor yeah. guy. He's only doing it because kiss kiss. he thinks he should. <laughs> kiss, kiss, Donnie. So he wants us to go to um, uh, the new Willow Spring High School or the newly remodeled Fuquay High School this weekend where there's a real track. It's my assignment that I took on myself to find out if we'll have access or not. Um, Michelle's daughter Ariel is doing track at the Willow Springs High School now and uh, so maybe I can find out some info from her or pen to one of the local Facebook groups. But at any point um, Don wants to do that test. This runner guy, runner guy that's such a um, defined, well-defined uh, description, right? This gentleman that wrote a book about running and your physical fitness and such. Uh, you're supposed to do a measurement of your physical fitness based on how far you can run in 12 minutes. And you really don't want to run on uneven hills or surfaces or, you know, to compare yourself against everybody else that has done this test for your age and sex, you, uh, really need to do it on a track, that's all I'm trying to say. So, for his uh, 65th birthday, which is Saturday, he wants to uh, complete that run as part of our go out and exercise that day. So, if you know, where we do that turnaround on the weekends there at the manhole cover, sewer cover, there and we say oh we made it to the high school we're turning around now sometimes Don does a hit on that little hill that's basically where we're talking about him running so we could easily park over at the high school instead of at the 55 highway 55 parking lot let him do his 12 minute run with me cheering him on of course and then uh, go for our walk and just walk the trail in the opposite direction or something uh, we'll see. It's his birthday, whatever he wants to do. Like, you know, when he turns 60, some of you will remember on the channel, we, um, he did this, how many push-ups can a 60-year-old do and how long or how many or something. And he did really, really good. He did, but it's not, it's not a fair test for him with the uh, injury he had when he was younger and dislocated his shoulder. That just kind of makes daily push-up practice not the best uh, exercise for him. So, but in any way, it's another five-year birthday marker and he wants to do this. I'm sure he will ace it. I'm sure he'll ace it. Well, it's a good thing my uh, phone and watch both have a uh, battery right now because Don has my key fob in his pocket. We discovered something, and I hesitate to mention it, but I'm going to throw it here in sort of what will be the middle of today's video and say that we found out that if you leave the key fob in the car, and once you've exited the car, you click the lock button in the Tesla app, and you see the mirrors fold, that if you walk back up to the car without your phone, I did have my watch on, um, but without your phone, and the phone shouldn't matter, by the way, that um, the car will open. So I thought once you lock the key fob inside the car, and you hit the lock button, and the mirrors were folded, that you could not get back into that car without physically going into the app and unlocking it or um, having a key fob on you. And that, at least for Ruby, at least with this older Model X, that is not the case. So, a few times, <clears throat> someone could have, if they knew how to, pressed on the, Ruby's handle and gotten into the car. Um, it still wouldn't have allowed them to drive away because of pin to drive. 
but uh, they could have certainly gotten into the car. I mean, if they want my spare jacket out of the backs and a Tesla Hot Wheels, I guess that's probably not worth uh, risking a felony for, but um, that would have been what they would have found. So don't do that. I'm just telling you. So I only have that. just a few minutes and I got to take right back off. It's already 10 15, so I've got 10 minutes max. Thankfully, it's winter time and uh, no shower in particular necessary before I leave today because it's not happening. I'm headed up Highway 55 to the turnpike to the chiropractor. I have three minutes to spare because you know I like to leave a lot of extra time to get places. <laughs> It just is what it is. Oops. This is uh, essentially the entrance to the turnpike. This is where 540, you know, that they're working on that heads over towards I-40. That part, of, new part of the turnpike um, connects because, you know, right now the turnpike ends here. So there's a lot of construction around the entrance and exit to the turnpike at this spot. There's Sharon Harris Cloud in the Holly Springs landfill. So I'm noticing with the latest update or at least the last two times I've honked the horn expecting, uh, well, trying to alert the other driver and uh, expecting a dash cam clip to be saved, that it's waiting much longer, seemingly, 30 seconds maybe, before it actually saves the clip. So I wonder if they've not fixed the jumping bug, but they've made it so that the uh, clip isn't cut the red dot or whatever at exactly uh ruby's driving here yes you can go over ruby um that the clip is not cut at exactly the time that you do the honk so you're not losing whatever it was that was important you know that bug of it jumping around must be harder to resolve than one would think but uh if they just will make it the red dot be a little past where you you know, actually honk the horn, then that could be, you know, a good workaround. All right, I'm here. I did not get stuck at the uh, light, so I'm on time. So we did my toe and my back. We split the pulse um, for the first 10 minutes, and then we did 20 minutes on my back. And um, so far, you know, so good. I'm certainly not in a lot of pain right now. I wasn't when we started today. Um, Yesterday when I was lugging Lego bins around all afternoon working on that project and into the evening and it was I probably shouldn't have been doing that. I should have said nah body's telling me that's not a good idea right now Let's stop it and instead I was like darn it. I want to do what I want to do and I don't care if it hurts and I'm gonna work through it <laughs> That's not always the smartest thing So I'm headed to guardian angel apex. Michelle has already let me know. She's looking forward to my pictures of potential things you might be interested in and just kind of shopping with me even though she's not here we're going to meet up thursday this week for our normal shopping all goes well and um i am going to try to buzz on over to whole foods too well, i'm doing the weekly look for legos build a bears anything else robotic or interesting i spy looking up high a bin with some legos in it i still want more valentine's day stuff more red, more hearts. I just didn't get those kind of donations this year, I guess. Those are super cute. I have to wonder if my friend Phyllis in Texas would buy them if she was here with me. <laughs> they are very this cute. is the spot where there would always be willow tree or fairy garden things. I thought this Norman Rockwell figurine was pretty cute. Notice the little dog underneath and the little girl feet. That's a nice tablecloth, but um, I guess I'm not in love with it for the money. So, mostly Legos, mostly clean. Star Wars and dinosaurs. You know, that could be the Mandalorian ship. I think that's what that is. Is that not okay, the Mandalorian? No. This is how we buy Legos. I think that's the Mandalorian ship. 
Well, I think there's a 60% a chance that's the Razor Crest, and certainly if not, probably enough parts to build the Razor Crest. I'll have to investigate more when I get to the house, look for the round, um, I'm gonna call it a turbine. The engine, the tubes on the side of the Razor Crest, see if they're in the bin but not attached. Uh, Michelle would be <clears throat> ecstatic. I've already showed her the picture and compared it to the picture of the Razor Crest on the Lego box. And like I said, I give it a 60%, maybe even 70% chance it's the Razor Crest. I'm not, uh, I'm not as up to date on Star Wars ships as I am on Star Trek ships. You put a Star Trek ship in front of me and Johnny and we can probably name it. Um, I do know Star Wars ships a little bit. And um, anyway, something to investigate further. I love it when I take the treasure hunt home with me. I think we remember the drill. I need to be out of here by about 1.50. There was an awesome Tesla wrapped, wrapped Tesla <laughs> when I pulled up over here and I chatted with the owners. His is the lime yellow green color, really pretty. And he said she has a purple one, identical but purple wrap. Very cool. Okay, ETA is 218. That'll probably turn into 220. That's totally fine. It's a nice day out here too. Ruby says it's up to 48. It's at least 48. Yeah, I don't know what it is, Johnny. Stock Corvette. At first, I just, yeah, I mean, it's too wide and too low. I suppose I should try to pass it. <laughs> You'd like. When we get through the light, I'll go around to the left. I have no clue what it is. Maybe Kyle can help us. Is it a North Carolina plate? Maybe. Yes, it is. That is definitely a North Carolina plate. I can see that. Okay. Well, obviously. Well, I'm not going to let him leave me behind. <laughs> Especially if you're wanting to, I can't, I have no clue what it is, but we want to see it, so. Way back, Lamborghini. it's a Ferrari. Ferrari? Mm -hmm. Is that Ferrari? No, that's a Lamborghini. Okay. Lamborghini. That's pretty cool. Well, if he sees you filming him, you can just wave. Bye! <laughs> By the way, I was wrong. It was a Ferrari, not a Lamborghini. Yeah, well, Johnny and I don't know those fancy cars no. like that. We're just, that's not, you know, we're, not, yeah. But Super we're, cars have never been my thing. I'm more interested. He would have raced me if I had been willing to keep my foot in it. But, you know, there was actually a Capital City police officer in, in his normal spot today, which was a little bit ahead of where we were side by side. And I told Johnny with him making all of that racket, drawing attention. You know, when the Tesla takes off, it's like in stealth mode. <laughs> but when that car took off, it was pretty noisy. But we waved at him and, you know, he was a good sport. It's hard to behave, though, when you have all those temptations out here on the road. Hi, boys. Good afternoon. Hello. Oh, I didn't mean for you to come in front of the car. Ah. I guess, Johnny, you should hop out. And um, corral them for me so I can get finished turned around. Johnny always enjoys going through the new uh, Lego bins with me when I bring them home. And I'm thinking that looks like an Imperial Walker or one of those other... It's a Star Wars thing. It's pretty cool. We'll have to look it up. If it has, you know, robot parts, the technique parts, we get pretty excited about it here at our house. Yeah, some of the bricks are dirty, but it rinses right off in the sink. And I've washed these three things, which... We think the yellow guy and the gray guy are Star Wars ships. We just don't know which ones without researching them. And i um, not sure about the red guy. But Johnny wanted these three things, so I washed them first. I think this might be part of a Marvel set or something. I'm going to have to look that up, too. And there's some... This is a real Lego dinosaur part, and there's a couple other dinosaurs, but I lost track of them in there somewhere. There's some sort of old-school police thing in here. There's lots of parts that say the word police on them somewhere and this is another ship all of these are easily cleaned i think that might be a sand blaster one of the ships from tatooine maybe maybe not um 
yeah i don't know we've sort of pulled out i don't see any big tubes like we would have saw on the razor crest but we did find Bo a boba fett figure in here so i'm gonna research a little more now besides the santa brick heads which i'm excited to have i gotta find santa's foot this is obviously a Lego Christmas advent calendar. There's a train toy and a chimney and a Santa figure and an elf figure and it's pretty cool. That'll look great in next year's Winter Village. Well, a few minutes of research um, helped me to understand what I have. This is some sort of a, um, I'll put a picture up, a troop uh, transport Imperial. It's from 2015 or something. It's not the Razor Crest like I had hoped. We did, though, however, have, have a Boba a, Fett minifigure, and that goes with the um, Carbonite Chamber and uh, the Han Solo brick where he gets lowered and raised from the chamber, and that whole set appears to be intact. So that was a super find. And then some sort of a Star Wars AP. I'll put a picture up. Um, and then uh, the yellow ship and the red ship and the other funky... One of them is a Ninjago thing. Um, and there's a whole police old school police in there and some sheriff's office sort of a thing so that that bin was like filled with goodies out the that was that was a really good bin hi gypsy you know you were here at 7 30 this morning and eight and you're back now that's twice today sweetie that's twice that's totally fine but i was like food was missing this morning and sure enough you came extra early today and Jesse and we watch them all the time um, daily almost on week you know several times a week and um they were talking about regen the regen update oh but Tesla has regen oh but Tesla you know is always continually improving right so today's news cycle is <gasps> there's a 50,000 car Tesla recall oh my goodness mm. yeah so this whole con it has to do with um a rolling stop signs for FSD beta cars only, which I think we got a clue as to how many cars are in the program. But NHTSA is apparently in a dialogue with Tesla about that not being safe and it, it, it increases the chance of collision or something and Tesla needed to fix it. And um, I'm like, but you know, the new, the new cycle is 50,000 Tesla cars recalled. See, I can act like Jesse too, sort mm -hmm. of, sometimes. And, um, you know, whoop de doo they're going to put out a software update and make it not do that anymore. I mean, I think this whole we can fix things with software instead of hardware is like a new concept for recalls, for NHTSA, for recalls or whatever. But, like, Reuters was reporting... 50,000 Tesla cars. I'm like, just go get a life. I mean, really, honest to God, nobody else, none of these other car makers have to, I mean, I hear about recalls for things like uh, the gas pedal thing with the Ford Explorer and, you know, a couple of the major ones you might hear that were really problematic, but there's all these recalls in the daily news cycle. If it has Tesla in it, it makes the news. Yeah. I couldn't push the button. Back. Are you on top of my car? I'm not going to fuss at you. I'm not going to fuss. I really wish you wouldn't be up there, though. Say, well, Mom, if you don't want it to be a seat, you shouldn't leave it in the middle of the driveway. Hey, buddy. Hi. You look cold. Oh, big stretch. Oh, big stretch. Are you leaving? Oh, more footprints on the car. I am so excited. I figured out where I had the start finish tiles. They were in this bag of very important parts that I forgot I created. So I can put them on my raceway tomorrow. 